Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit, live here from PAX 2012 in Seattle, US. It's my pleasure to bring you David Steinmiddle of BitFlip Games. He's going to be showing us a game by the name of Minion Master. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, TB. All right, so tell me a little bit about what's going to be going on here. All right, well, Minion Master is a digital tabletop game. Uh, we've tried to bring in the best elements of our favorite games like HeroScape and uh, Warhammer 40K and uh, games like Magic the Gathering. You know, take the best, the best mechanics of each of those, marry them together, and make a really fun, easy, quick-to-play video game. But it's a strategy game that has a ton of depth once you start going down the rabbit hole. All right, well, let's go down that rabbit hole then, shall we? So let's see what's going on. All right, well, here we are. We're starting off. We have a, a small two-player match, uh, nice and easy to start with. We support right. up to six players in a match. Sure. Uh, this uh, will be recognizable. It's a hex-based uh, Pack space board on the board. There's an avatar for each player. Okay. Uh, so that's your representation in the world, kind of like your home base. Sure. The goal of the game is to destroy your opponent's avatar, okay. and you do that by destroying his minions. So right. if we're playing a game, every time I kill one of your minions, your avatar loses health. Okay. In this scenario, each of our avatars are starting with seven health. All right. So I have to kill uh, seven of your minions to uh, to win the game. All right. Let's get it started then, shall we? So let's. The first challenge is how to unpause. It <laughs> so could I'm be the P, uh, P to unpause the game. Truly, truly a strategic mind required for that. <laughs> yes. So if you uh, pull the mouse down to the bottom of the screen, yep. you'll see the card frame. And so right. uh, you interact with the game by playing cards. There okay. are two basic types of cards. There are summon cards, like the summon knight card. Yep. And that brings a minion to the board to fight for you. Mm -hmm. And there are modifier cards, like this reinforcements card, okay. which somehow change something on the board. Sure. So you need mana. That's your resource to play cards. Yep. Each card has a play value. That's how much mana it costs to play. Yep. And right next to it is the discard value. That's how much mana you earn By if you discard the game or discard okay. the card. So the first thing you want to do is get something out on the board for fight, to fight for you. So you yep. should start by maybe discarding that reinforcements card. Sure. And discard the extra life card next to it. Yeah, let's get rid and of that. Which then, okay, it highlights it there. So I've got four mana to play a knight, no problem at all. Then you click play, right? Yeah, hit it, hit play. It puts it in the play position. Okay. Once you've decided, you can keep discarding and playing as many cards as you can yep. uh, of your five. And when you're ready, you've decided on your move, you hit that commit button over on the uh, right or left hand side of the card frame. Well, it will commit with a single knight to start with. Mm -hmm. And go ahead and move the mouse up to the top of the screen, get rid of the card frame. And you'll notice all the minions are coming out, and my opponent or your opponent has uh, summoned two kobolds and an archer. You've got a knight, and everybody plays cards at the same time, so it's round based in that way. Sure. And you'll notice that these guys are moving completely on their own. Okay. And so they're completely autonomous once they're on the board. Right. You interact with them by playing cards. And so it's a strategy game. You need to know kind of what's going on and what these guys are going to do. Okay. So we give you a lot of information about the board. Sure. So actually, if we go back to the board for a moment and you maybe hover the mouse over the knight, you'll notice you can immediately see everywhere he can move. That's those gold arrows. And uh -huh. the end of his attack range, that's the, uh, the red arrows. Sure. Uh, so you can see he can hit any of those guys. Uh, over here on the left-hand side, we show you all his stats. You've got to stay hovered over him, sure, though. Got it. And uh, his special ability, each minion has something special and unique about them, which determines yep. their play style. Uh, this guy has a trample attack. So if he kills a minion, he takes their tile. If there's another minion directly in line, he gets to attack them. Okay. He can do that up to four times in a, in a turn. Sure. And then you see here his tactics. So this is how he's deciding where to move and who to attack. Okay. And so you can see uh, the he'll look for the longest line of enemies and the weakest line of enemies on the board. Okay. So looking at this board on the next turn, uh, if we take a look here, we can see there's a line of it's two kobolds right yep. here. He's going to go right for that. And you can also use tactics to start manipulating the board game. So if we look at the kobold, his tactics say he looks for the guy with the least defense. Right. I can look at my knight and see he has a defense of 50. And if I look in the hand, I can see I have a, a footman, footman. which would have less. So, Ergo, you could use the footman to draw them in and use him as the meat shield. Exactly. So why don't you go ahead and uh, discard these, these three cards right here on the right-hand side. Two and three. And then go ahead and uh, put the footman in the play position. Go ahead, click the uh, play button above him. Yep. And also that extra life card. Yep. So you're going to bring out a footman, and you're going to buff him to because you know he's going to draw those kobolds. Exactly, yeah. So go ahead and commit your play. Now, because you have two minions available, it lets you choose who gets the modifier card. Sure. You can pick either your knight, who's on the board, but we said we wanted to we pick the footman. Yeah. So uh, the guys coming out are in the top left-hand screen, so just click on your footman. Done. And there you go. So your opponent has pulled out uh, another two kobolds and an archer. Your footman spawned behind your, uh, behind your avatar. Here comes the knight. He's looking for that line of kobolds. He yep. tried to hit the first one, but missed. If he would have killed it, he would have gotten to go down the line. And there's the kobolds getting drawn away to the footman. Now, the footman's special ability is counterattack. So each time one of those footmen attacks 
or is attacked, if he successfully defends, he gets to immediately attack back. So he just got to, uh, he took out the first kobold and got a shot at the second one. Now these kobolds up here, they can't actually reach the footman, so they're going to go for the, the uh, closest yep. available unit, which is the knight. So that's the basic gist of the game. In right. between each round, you know, you're given five new cards, and you need to look at the, at the game board and figure out how do you take advantage of what's on the board based on the cards you have sure. uh, in your hand at the time. All right. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Advanced Lance would be an upgrade modifier for Allied Footman. That plays on all Allied Footman. It would be nice to get a second one out before I use that. I might want to hold on to it, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But I do have four mana. I could play an extra life, certainly, or I could bring another knight into play. Might be good to get more units on the field. I'm completely outnumbered at this mm -hmm. stage. Now, if I don't play a card, do I get to keep it to the next round? Uh, no. If you don't play a card, uh, your cards reset every round, as does your mana. So, so you might as well discard if you're not going to play it. Exactly. Right, okay. So we can't get enough for advanced lance, but if we were to discard that, that will give us enough to play an extra life. So let's do that. All right, looks good. Let's go with that. Okay, so the question is, who do you want to give it to? Well, he's taking a bit of a hit. So what's his current health at the moment? It's on two. He's got to be taking a lot of pounding, so I think we'll give it to him. That's, that's the right move. Yep. Oh, yeah, he's, he's got to be having a bit of fun here, by looks Oh, yeah, and your opponent has just frenzied up those kobolds, so that's uh, an exponential attack buff based on the number of, uh, of uh, kobolds on the board. So yep. it gets plus five on each kobold for each kobold. Well, but his trample attack just took two of them out. Very nice. Kobold is dancing around the place for whatever reason. Footman should be able to deal with him. There mm -hmm. we go. And took he's him taken out. out once again. Yeah, this guy is having problems. He's only got three points left, so not going well for him. Our knight is still... Well, he could go down. He's on one point of health. He's a lucky one. Nice. He did survive. All right. Let's see what we've got then. So, extended lance, fearless warrior. Reinforcements might be good, certainly. Mm-hmm. That'll bring out two footmen directly to the aid of any knight. So, you've got your knight all the way at the other end of the board. It'll summon up two footmen right next to him. So, immediate support. Super useful. So, we're definitely going to play that. You can also right-click a card if you want to focus on it, bring yep. it up. So you can read it. Hmm, I'm thinking we do that, and then we play Fearless Warrior after that. That might work. Mm-hmm. Discard that so that we've got the mana to do it. Apparently, we can also... Can we play that too? Oh, yeah, you can. You, uh, oh. if you've got to click on the top half of the card. If you click on the bottom half, it'll discard it. The top uh -huh. half, it'll uh, throw it up into the play position. So one right. more click. There you yeah. go. There we go. Okay, so we got re reinforcements, Fearless Warrior. We can afford. Leaves with no mana remaining. We could discard that. It don't think it allows us to play anything, though. So let's get rid of it anyway. No, nope, it doesn't. Okay, so let's commit. All right, so reinforcements will be coming in on the night. So we should certainly get a couple of footmen just jumping in, which makes things a lot easier. Knight takes him out, tramples forward. We might win this in the next turn. We'll see. Well, that's our knight out of the way. It's going to be close. You've got a shot. And another footman oh. taken out. So he has a lot of defense over there. I'll try and pick out the outliers, maybe. And you notice that kobold that time attacked the knight. So when he was buffed up, his tactics were actually changed to take advantage of the fact that he now had a very high attack sure. rating instead of a low attack rating. Yeah. So we make sure that they always do the, uh, the smart and correct thing. Yeah. Well, let's see if the knight survives. If he does, I might be able to reinforce him, but no. No. All right, well, now it's suddenly getting a little bit trickier because it's one on one. This game could turn around very quickly. Yeah, yeah, there are a lot of things that can uh, turn the game on a dime. Hmm. Well, this would be useful. I don't have a knight on the field, so reinforcements is useless at this time. This is useful, but I do not have enough mana to use both. Hmm. A line to attack might be useful, but I'd probably prefer extra life, I think. That's so. going to be the best, uh, best bet here. Seems like the option, yeah. Well, I'll just discard that. And then we've, I guess we've just got to throw it in there and hope for the best, really. Yeah, you're down to, I, down oh to your last few cards, but the game's almost over. So, you know, within the next round, we I think it's going to be done. We just need to pick off one kobold. Mm -hmm. Can we do so? I don't know. We're going to get engaged pretty hard already, but let's yeah. see if the extra life helps. He also gets the counterattack. There you go. And there's the win. Excellent. Congratulations. Well, I think I got a little bit lucky there, but regardless. <laughs> All right, so... Tell me a little bit about how this actually works in three-on-three -three multiplayer. 
Uh, so three on three. So what we have, we have up to six player multiplayer, and it's currently uh, all player versus player. So yep. every man for himself. We will be adding uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Co-op modes uh, sure. in the next month or two, so that you can get uh, any kind of any kind of team around six people. So okay. three on three, two on two on two, uh, five on one, four on two, and you know if you do that, you can just set it up any way you work, any way you want. If you're on a team with somebody, uh, his minions and your minions will act just like they're on the you know just like they're on the same team and just okay. you. That makes and sense. So we also have a pretty cool feature. So uh, in that small game you were playing, you saw that everybody uh, everybody went one at a time. Yep. We always resolve combat one minion at a time. But in a large match like this, that gets really slow. So we speed it up, and you're going to see everybody here going at the, at same, the same time. time. That's and, neat. And so what it does is the computer figures out everything that happened, optimizes it, and turns it into one big battle sequence for you. All right, that makes sense. Now, I saw there's a deck building option going on with that. Absolutely. Would you like to check that out? I would love to check that out. All right. Well, I think the most deck building is something that I like. So. Hop out of this game. So, so uh, we all have a deck builder, also have a level editor. OK. Uh, the deck builder is very simple and easy to use. On the top is all your available cards. Yep. On the bottom is whatever deck you're currently working on. Okay. We, by default, start you off on a sure. new deck. And all you have to do is uh, find the card you want and click on it, and it will go right into your deck. Let's look at some of the beefy ones, shall we? Let's uh, they got summon Werewolf, summon Catapult. Absolutely mm -hmm. huge cards. As Absolutely. You can see. So those are those are big units. We currently have uh, 18 different minions to choose from. Okay. Uh, spread over two different themed factions. There is a fantasy faction that's uh, like catapults, kobolds, trolls, archers, yep. and a horror faction. So your classic horror characters like the werewolf, a vampire. He's not in the game yet, but he'll be in in a few weeks. Uh, zombies, uh, shaman, summoner type of uh, type of character. So lots of different minions, depending on what your play style is. You want to find the minion that uh, the minion or two that really work well with it, and build a deck around those minions. How many factions are you looking to have on launch? Or actually, more to the point, how many cards are you looking to have on launch? On launch, uh, launch will be uh, end of October, beginning of November. Yep. We'll have two factions in the game when we launch: horror and uh, horror and fantasy, and about a hundred to one hundred and fifty cards. Our first expansion is already planned, and okay. that will be a steampunk faction. So ah. nine more minions and fifty more cards based around steampunk. And the nice thing is you can mix and match. You can create a, a horror slash fantasy deck, or when steampunk comes in, you'll be able to create, you know, steampunk and and fantasy. If you of know. course you can find the synergy to make it work. Naturally. Yeah, yeah. So. What's the business model behind this then? If you're starting off with two factions, but you're already planning an expansion, how's that going to work? Mm -hmm. uh, so how it works is when you buy the game, you get the game. So it's a $20 purchase online or $15 yep. here at PAX. And we give you a set of cards to work with that comes with between three and 400 cards. Sure. Uh, it has three pre-built decks from each faction. And for people who pre-order, we throw in a couple extra decks okay. and a couple extra cards. Um, and so you can make basically you know whatever you want out of those cards. Everybody has the same set. You will be able to buy uh, extra sets of cards or booster packs if you want more cards uh, but those don't give you different cards it's not like you get better cards for buying okay. booster packs you just add to your available vault so say you had the shaman shield card and you wanted to make a deck with seven of them and you only have four then you would go for a booster pack all right Okay, that makes perfect sense. Will there be any trading functionality? Uh, yeah, you'll be able to trade cards with your friends. So, you know, if you really like playing with the shaman and the, the fantasy or the horror stuff and they really like horror, you can just swap all your cards. All right, fair enough. And we're looking for an October release, as you pointed out right there. And we're looking for $20 pre-order for this, $15 if you happen to be at PAX. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the follow-up of the cards right there. And is PC the only platform you're looking to launch on? Uh, PC is the only launch platform. We'll be expanding to Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android in 2013. Right. And I should also mention that people who pre-order the game, they get instant access to our closed beta, so they can start playing within minutes. All right. Okay, well, thank you very much for letting us have a look at Minion Master, ladies and gentlemen. So if you're looking for some collectible card action, do keep an eye out for that. If they want to check out the website, where do they need to go? It is www.minionmaster.com. Minionmaster.com, folks. There you go. There's a look at Minion Master collectible trading card. And I suppose it's a mixture of trading card and miniatures game uh, mm -hmm. from BitFlip Games. Thank you very much for showing us this today. It's been absolutely fantastic. My name is Total Biscuit here from PAX, and I will see you next time.